All right, doing a quick overview of how to run a mapping mission in DJI Pilot. First of all, when you open your Pilot app, depending on an Android device, you'll see two options here, manual flight and mission flight. If you're on an iOS device here, basically uh, it's not gonna happen. There is no mission flight option with iOS right now. But mission flight ultimately is allowing you to complete an automated mission without pilot input. So whether that's mapping, waypoints, obliques, et cetera, you're able to plan on a mission beforehand, press a few buttons to upload that mission to the drone, and go ahead and execute it. A little more information here because when I go through some of the parameters later, it helps to understand this. But ultimately, we're going over mapping missions today. And by taking overlapping photos, you're able to stitch them together in a photogrammetry software. And these overlapping photos, say there's a tree in one image, a tree in another image, the tree connects those two images together and allows the photogrammetry engine to stitch those together. Very simplified point there, but think about a bunch of photos going on and the stitching occurring. You could technically do this in a manual flight, and sometimes folks do, but ultimately you can see better results through using automated flights and taking those pictures at set intervals. So just a quick example here, you can see an example mission flight. It's kind of this lawnmower pattern going back and forth. You see the red uh, airplane there representing the drone, but you see here as we go ahead slides, as the drone is Proceeding and taking more pictures, the map itself is expanding as those photos are stitched in. So once again, not a perfect example here, but you can see in this example, this is some live 2D mapping, but continues to add on to the map as you take more photos. And just where this would be useful in the real world, you can see a picture here from California horse fire, Post fire area has been decimated. A high resolution map of the area really helps you can compare before and after. Obviously, a lot of steps that goes into this, but ultimately, uh, something like this accident reconstruction, all useful cases where we want to run a mission flight. So, circling back to our app, you'll start by clicking mission flight. And then you have two options here, create a route and KML import. Today we'll just run over creating a route. So go ahead and click on create a route. And then you'll have four options here. Once again, today we're focusing on mapping, but waypoint is just placing GPS points. Obliques would be if we're trying to create a 3D model. One of your flight missions would be something long and skinny like a road. But for today's example, we're going with mapping. Just what you're gonna see here on the main screen, first thing we have our air sense. So if there's any airplanes nearby, that air sense system menu is gonna pop up on the left side. You can just click hide or click the airplane to go ahead and hide that. Next one would be to erase any flight routes. So if you've flown your drone around, you can kind of see the, the trail behind it on here. You can click the erase button uh, to erase that flight route. Layers here, you have just your basic map here if you want the satellite imagery, which is not the greatest with Mapbox, but can often be better than nothing. Uh, if your RC is connected to internet, you can go ahead and switch over to satellite imagery. That's not saved on the controller. This is just orienting your map to north, kind of like on Google Maps or Apple Maps. Just when you're driving, you can unlock that or keep that locked. Just bring the map uh, to your location. And then this is to show DJI geo zones, like the restricted areas and whatnot, you can toggle those on and off there. Here though is where we can see our mission parameters by hitting the arrows here on the right side. We'll pull that up momentarily, but first tap to create a mapping area. So just kind of the general area you wanna be mapping, you can just go ahead to the map. You don't need to be connected to your drone at this point. You can do this before the mission or after, uh, but go ahead and tap. And then we'll get into the pilot app here. So we have opened our side menu now. A few things here. If you want to add another point to make this like a pentagon, a polygon, so you need to map that area, you can tap there, drag there. You can tap any of these points. You can see that whichever one is blue is what's selected right now. So you can just drag that or you can scroll down on this side right menu. We'll get to that in a second and edit the exact latitude longitude of this point. 
can see the distances between uh, the sides of our polygon right now. You can see some other items as well we'll get to. Uh, right here you can see the RC location, the aircraft's home point, where the aircraft's at right now. And then the green line here, you can see where the mission flight would start. And the flight route is basically this green line that the drone would follow. Can name your mission, whatever you'd like. I'm just going with the default here of mapping three. Important to select the camera type here. So in this case, we're going with we have a Mavic 2 Enterprise Zoom. You can see a lot of DJI options here. If you don't see a DJI option there that you're flying, you can go ahead, uh, click on custom camera and input those parameters. We'll add those custom camera information to the description of the video here. But based on that camera, it's important to select the right one because basically when we're flying, we want our overlap to be a certain ratio. And based on the field of view and the resolution of the camera, uh, you're going to determine your GSD, ground sampling distance, and then also um, later on, we're trying to stitch together. You want to have a certain percentage and whatnot. So just important to put the camera in. Uh, photo mode here, after we selected our camera, you can do time interval shots or time distance. Uh, you just stick with time interval. Altitude, the altitude of your flight, takeoff speed, uh, just when we're going to the mission and then speed during the mission. Usually just uh, leave speed at the maximum because you're only going to be able to fly as fast as the shutter speed allows and then leave takeoff speed as, as is and then altitude uh, here in feet will want to leave that at your maximum altitude that you'll be flying for the mission. Clicked on and you scroll down there's an option to, to do like what would you like to do at the end of the mission. So that's upon completion, uh, but you can hover, return to home, land, or go to the route start point. So that S here, so options there. Hover, the drone is just gonna hover, land, the drone will land where it is, go to a route start point, the drone's gonna fly back to the start point and hover there. Longitude, latitude, that's of the current uh, polygon point you have selected right now. So if you wanted to move that up, down, left, right, or update the points there, you can. Now moving into advanced settings, you have our side overlap ratio. So like I talked about, you see the drone's gonna be following the green route here and side overlap ratio is the ratio between photos as it's going along, it's taking photos. So on the way back, side overlap ratio is gonna be the overlap between these photos. So you can see, I'm kind of adding the photos, like we took this photo on this route, we took this photo on our way back here. It's the overlap between these two photos. So right now that's at 70%. Add a few more here, but you'll see when it comes back down, takes another photo with that gray border, takes another photo with the orange border. This isn't exactly the scale, but just to get you the idea, if you increase your side overlap ratio, these green lines are gonna get closer together. If you decrease them, they're gonna get farther away. So just something to be aware of. Usually the default's gonna be good to go unless you have special parameters from your mapping software. Uh, moving into the frontal overlap ratio here. So we just covered side, but moving into frontal now. Uh, that's gonna be the overlap here, uh, the photos as the drone is going forward. So you can see as I add these here, that's the overlap between those photos. Of course, angle, so you can see 180 is pretty much what our course angle is right now. If you change that to 90 or 270, the drone would fly back and forth. Ultimately, usually just pick what's most efficient unless you need your photos to line up with something that's on the ground. As the drone's gonna be uh, flying with the nose of the drone facing forward, the longer side of your photos is going to be horizontally across. So I do see some situations in like solar, for example, where uh, they want to be flying at a different course angle. Margin is just how far outside basically of your polygon you want to map. This is a good practice to have some margin just because you'd rather take a few extra photos than come back on another day. Put the margin down. You can see that how far we're pretty much going outside the circle is going down. And you can also see uh, this moves in a little more to the right 
basically. So there's not as much margin of the polygon. If you have a specific area and you cannot fly outside of that area, you want to set that margin to zero feet. So then the drone's going to be just staying inside of the polygon that you draw. Going to have to scroll back up to go back here. And then you can go ahead and save the mission. It's saved onto your remote controller if you're using a smart controller, Android device, Crystal Sky. Uh, you can export it and whatnot, but just for uh, time's sake, you're saving it to the RC or mobile device that you're using. And then when we go ahead and execute it by hitting this blue play button, you have the option to upload the flight mission. Just in this case, the drone is already in the air. You can start it with the drone in the air. You can start it with the drone on the ground. That's uh, up to you. When you hit the play button, you'll see some key information. I set my upon completion to go to route start point at the end. Aircraft battery 61%, flight modes positioning. It's going to take about 2 minutes and 14 seconds to do this mission. It's going to take 55 photos. Um, upon completion, I usually actually leave this to return to home or hover, but it was just showing the parameters that you can change. So go to route start point as an option. And then you'll want to go ahead and click upload flight mission. It'll upload the flight mission to the drone. So once again, this is stored on the controller. You're uploading the route to the drone. Basically, a bunch of GPS waypoints. You're saying, hey, fly here, take a photo at this rate, et cetera. It's, it'll upload, very fast process. And then you'll have the option to start. Looking for the green bar up top, aircraft functioning normally. If you're flying an RTK craft and you're not connected to RTK, it might say caution in yellow. Uh, basically, yellow is caution. Green's uh, good to go. Red is an issue you're going to have to resolve. Maybe you need to do a compass calibration or something along those lines. But then you'll be good to hit the start button. The aircraft's going to proceed to the start point. And a few key things to remember here. You can hit the X to stop it. You can hit the pause button to pause it. On your controller, you should have a pause button as well. Another key thing, if you ever need to manually override the mission, would be to flip your mode switch on your RC between positioning and sport maybe, or just out of positioning and back into positioning mode. And that'll just freeze the drone in its tracks. It's gonna stay in one spot as long as GPS is enabled. So mission here is starting, and you can see it's about halfway done now at this point. The aircraft's just following along this green line. It's taking pictures. It's at 48% right now. You can see current speed. It's taking 27 of the 55 photos. On the bottom left, you can also see our camera view. You can click on that camera view to expand it, and then your map is going to be in the bottom left. Right now, I have histogram and manual focus up. These are some, some custom settings and whatnot that you can't have on the screen and adjust, but uh, for practice of just showing the mission flight here, we won't worry about those too much today. But you can see right now a photo is being taken as the drone proceeds along the route, and then this is in between photos now. But you can basically just watch and make sure that you're collecting quality data here. Nothing super overexposed or off. I want to leave that. And look at these camera settings beforehand too. Easiest is just set uh, auto focus and make sure it's taking the smallest imagery possible. So three by two or four by three when you are flying. So that's about that. Just a quick overview of how to execute a mission flight in DJI Pilot.